Honourable David Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, while we uh, thank the people who, who um, assisted the committee, could I um, make mention of Deborah Angus and Maypara Puata? Uh, Deborah Angus uh, and Maypara have uh, provided assistance to various committees over the year. Years. And actually, when you come to these issues that are arcane in terms of the constitutional pr uh, principles at large, Deborah Angus, I think, is probably one of the experts in the Commonwealth. Uh, and uh, uh, I particularly value the advice that we get from her and the assistance that we get to the committee. Uh, and it's interesting that some of the reports that we've done recently have turned up being quoted in reports of other Commonwealth parliaments around the world, particularly in relation to our questions uh, concerning parliamentary privilege. Um, Mr Speaker, the, uh, at the heart of uh, or the, the, what caused this inquiry was something that really was, it would be hard to script in one of those old silent movies, the Keystone Cops. It was the, the, um, it was the, uh, the, the report that went wrong into the report that went wrong. <laughs> Uh, the original report was that of uh, Rebecca Kitteridge into things that went wrong at the GCSB and concerning those um, affairs of state, which I don't want to make light of because they were se serious affairs, it then turned out that that report was leaked to the media uh, and uh, we all know that it was leaked by the Honourable Peter Dunn. Uh, and uh, uh, he's, you know, he hasn't. We know, we know that not. We we we, we know that that's not be because of admission. It's just that he's refused to deny it. And he and and he. What's that? Oh, uh, and he uh, he <laughs> he uh, lost his ministerial um, uh, portfolios for a very brief period because um, uh, the prime minister thought he might need him. Uh, to form a future government, I think, was the reason. Uh, and uh, so he had effectively a very short time suspended as a minister. We then, uh, as a consequence of the leak that was never proven, um, because the uh, Prime Minister refused to reach a conclusion on all the evidence that it had been leaked by Peter Dunn, um, uh, we had the, the incident uh, uh, of the... Uh, manner of the inquiry into the unauthorised release of information relating to the GCSB compliance review report, i.e. this is the inquiry into the leaked uh, report by Rebecca Kitteridge. And this inquiry was by Mr Henry, and Mr Henry and those that assisted him managed to get released uh, to them things that shouldn't have been released. And those included uh, documents uh, relating to the movements of uh, members of the gallery, uh, notably Andrea Vance, uh, and uh, copies of uh, phone records uh, which uh, indicated who was phoning who. And wh who was phoning whom? Whom? Thank you. Thank you. Special I'm, no, finest, no, contribution. finest contribution from Mr Hayes. And I'll actually, knowing Mr Hayes as I do, I'll go and check that one afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish him well in his next stage in his career. Um, Mr um, Speaker, um, so uh, it then, then transpired that uh, the Henry report didn't... Uh, even used the Official Information Act, which could have been actually quite useful for getting information from the ministerial hard drive as to whether the ministerial hard drive was used uh, for communications with the press, uh, which would probably have been disclosable under the Official Information Act. Actually, we still haven't had a final decision on that from the, from the Ombudsman, which makes a bit of a, 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 you know, it's so long after the event that it's become a bit farcical. Um, but uh, not having used the Official Information Act to get what was probably official information under the Official Information Act because it was ministerial information, uh, I don't think it's, uh, it's permissible for a minister to claim that they did something on a ministerial hard drive and then because it's inconvenient for them that it proved that they leaked a document to claim that that shouldn't be disclosed under the Official Information Act. But in any event, that's not the route that Mr Henry took. He got, managed to convince parliamentary services to release information that ought not to have been released, and then we had the hullabaloo about the release of both members of parliament's information and uh, information that should have been kept confidential for the press. Now, 
I want to make the fundamental point that the reason that we do this is not actually to serve our own interests, it's to protect democracy. One of the things that is very important in this parliament is that uh, members of parliament can go about their business, they can receive information confidentially from constituents, uh, they can, where appropriate, uh, where, where, where they, that's right, they could receive the information confidentially from journalists, they can receive information confidentially from anybody, and that ought to be their information to disclose, unless it is information that they hold as ministers within the uh, Official Information Act or the ambit of the Official Information Act. And it's important that that be retained because that's actually one of the mechanisms by which we uh, protect. Uh, in appropriate cases, the anonymity of people who are bringing us information to encourage them to do so. Uh, and, uh, uh, and through the processes that we have, including the privilege that we have in Parliament to actually say things even if they attack the interests of the wealthy uh, and might in ordinary circumstance be suppressed because of the risk of defamation suit uh, uh, at the, at the um, behest of people who feel that they um, don't want their, uh, their reputation undermined, even if it's a fair undermining of their reputation. Some people have got very deep pockets and go to extraordinary lengths to protect their position. So the, one of the roles of this parliament is to protect the cleanliness of democracy by being transparent about things that go wrong. And, and this is actually what this relates to. If, if the information that comes to members of parliament uh, can be uh, obtained and given to somebody else, well, it's less likely that information will come to us. And similarly, the role of the press is to, uh, to work around this place and find out where things are going wrong. And sometimes that is through um, disclosures by members of parliament. Sometimes those disclosures are not um, uh, to the liking of their own political parties. But nonetheless, that's one of the things that happens in democracy. And, and the role of the media to try and winnow those things out and encourage people to talk about things that perhaps shouldn't be happening within political parties from time to time is a very proper role of, the, of the, um, the gallery, and they ought not to have the confidentiality of their um, communications that are held on parliamentary systems or where they walk around the building able to be scrutinised on the basis of swipe card records that are, that are held by computer systems as a consequence of when we swipe through electronic locks as we go from parts of the building to parts of the building. So, Mr Speaker, it's for those reasons uh, that the um, Speaker referred the, uh, these issues to the Privileges Committee. Privileges Committees come up with a series of uh, recommendations which we agree unanimously across Parliament, which is fantastic. Uh, all of the areas of disagreement were worked through by the members of the committee so that we got to agreement and we all agree that the likes of that swipe card information that really wouldn't have been available to be collected uh, until, uh, you know, a few years ago, it was only when we had these electronic security systems and the computer systems to keep records of those um, over time that we could have that sort of information that can establish patterns. Uh, similarly, a lot of the stuff that's collected on emails uh, would not have been in written communications in earlier years, uh, and the phone records that are now so detailed wouldn't have been available years ago either. You'd have just picked up the phone and, and, uh, and there wouldn't have been an electronic record of the numbers that were being phoned. Now, uh, those sorts of, that sort of information is now collected for different reasons, but it ought not to be automatically disclosed. And so we make the presumption that this sort of information should not be released, that individual members should retain complete control over this. We discuss the issue as to whether that shouldn't be something that could be devolved to whips of parties, and we all agreed it ought not to be. It, it uh, ought to be the preserve of individual members of parliament. Uh, and in respect of journalists, uh, again, we were absolutely clear that they ought to be um, in a similar position and retain control over information that affects them. That wouldn't stop the Official Information Act re uh, release of ministerial information that, that showed dealings with a journalist, um, because that's actually disclosable under the Official Information Act. Um, in respect of um, other information, then the Speaker's delegated to do it, and we trust the Speaker to do that well. Um, Mr Speaker, I don't think I'll say anything more than that. I think that this is a, a, a good report, um, and these uh, things, as I say, they're not actually for the protection of individual members. They're to keep this place functioning for the good of democracy. I call Dr Kennedy Graham. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It is one year now since the Speaker ruled on a question of privilege raised by the Green Party. The issues involve the 
exercise of intrusive powers against members, and the release of information from parliamentary information and security systems. The particular incident involved the release of information to the Henry Inquiry that was held on parliamentary information systems.